Yeah, we're back. We're live on a Thursday morning. This is Talking Tax, Talking Tax with Tom, Tom Yamachika. And uh, we're talking today with Jim Smith, who is a former state senator in Nebraska and uh, the leader of the uh, Blueprint in Nebraska program, which we find very interesting to discuss. Hence, the name of our show is Tax Reform Blueprint in Nebraska. Welcome to the show, you guys. Good morning. And uh, let me just uh, uh, give a couple of words of introduction for Jim. Jim is the executive uh, vice president of the Platt Institute in Nebraska, uh, which is an organization similar to the Tax Foundation here in Hawaii. Um, they're uh, a tax watchdog organization, and uh, they are uh, looking out for policy initiatives dealing with tax and public finance, just like we are. Uh, Jim is their executive vice president and chief strategy officer. Did I get that right? That is correct. Okay, great. Um, and the, the reason why we're here this morning uh, is to talk about uh, this uh, blueprint for tax modernization um, that uh, Nebraska uh, has recently initiated. Uh, it, could you, could you tell us a little bit about the Platt Institute first and then maybe give us an idea of what this blueprint is all about? And tell us whether it's the law now or to be. Uh, it's still working well, on it. Yes, it, it is a framework currently and uh, we're hoping that uh, we will be able to uh, uh, have the legislature uh, develop legislation uh, around this uh, framework and that it becomes uh, a bill in front of the legislature in the 2022 legislative session. Uh, regardless of whether that happens or not, we have a gubernatorial election next year, and uh, we expect that it will con continue over to 2023 uh, in discussion. Uh, so, uh, so it's not currently legislation, but it is a recommendation and uh, for a framework in which to build the best legislative policy uh, around tax modernization. And, uh, and if, I, if I could maybe uh, mention that uh, I also wear a hat uh, as president of Blueprint Nebraska. Blueprint Nebraska is in the process of phasing out. It's a three-year-old initiative and it was the first and largest uh, comprehensive strategy uh, for economic prosperity, growth and competitiveness across the state. Uh, it was uh, established uh, by Governor Ricketts and the University of Nebraska President Hank Bounds, and it, it involved about 21 leaders uh, in business from across the state. My chair is uh, Lance Fritz, who is the CEO President of Union Pacific Railroad uh, that is headquartered here in Omaha. And uh, Blueprint Nebraska was really about building a framework for making our state, improving our state's competitiveness among our peer states. And uh, before we before we go further on that, what is Nebraska like? Um, what issues does it have in its economy now? Uh, how does it compare against its competitive states? Uh, sure. and, and are the young and vital people leaving Nebraska the brain drain such as we have here in Hawaii? Exactly. Uh, the points you just made uh, were the reasons that we embarked on this initiative. Our standing right now is that we are considered a high tax state, even among our peer states, which are the border states to Nebraska. Uh, our uh, property taxes uh, rank 41st in the country. And that is- Does that mean 41st that, high or 41st low? 41st highest. Mm -hmm. And so when you look at uh, the rural uh, components of, of Nebraska, the ranchers, the farmers, uh, it's a huge burden to them. Uh, to have that high of uh, property taxes, especially when they do not necessarily have the type of representation they believe that they should have in lo local jurisdictions like, uh, like counties and school districts and so on. Uh, corporate, uh, we rank in the top half of states in corporate taxes. We are not competitive and we have to rely on business in, uh, incentives in order to be uh, as competitive as we are today with our regional states. And then when you look at uh, individual taxes, uh, we are middle of the pack. I mean, if you look at the brackets and the rates, we're middle of the pack. But the problem is that our highest bracket uh, kicks in at a mere $31,000 a year. 
So someone that is uh, at the low end of the, or at the, you know, the beginning end of the spectrum of career, uh, and they're just starting their career, uh, they have a huge burden on them uh, entering into the workforce. And then the person at the other end of the spectrum as well that is retiring and is moving into a fixed income structure, uh, they have a huge burden as well. So taxes, we are highly uh, non-competitive with our peer states. Um, quality of life, no one can compete with Nebraska for quality of life. We may not be a paradise uh, like Hawaii. However, we, uh, we have a great quality of life. Uh, smaller towns, smaller type cities, great infrastructure, things of that nature. Now we have a workforce issue. Like everyone does, uh, we have a workforce issue. And, uh, and we are working to develop the right types of jobs, higher paying jobs. So well, what types of jobs are you trying to develop? I mean, is this a defensive move in terms of, you know, retaining the best parts of Nebraska? Or is it, um, you know, an offensive move where you were trying to incentivize new sectors in the economy? Yeah, well, I would say it's a combination. We have a, a problem with out-migration, particularly among the 18 to 34-year-old population. Our rural communities are losing that 18 to 34-year-old population. And the STEM, the, STEM, uh, uh, the STEM degrees that are issued in Nebraska, oftentimes uh, those receiving those STEM degrees are leaving our state for, uh, for higher paying jobs. So that's part of the problem. Uh, so, that, so on a defensive move, we're trying to slow that outward migration, but on an offensive move, we're saying, hey, look, we do really well in diverse manufacturing in our state. We do really well in agriculture. Uh, we great producers for agricultural products, banking finance, uh, very strong as well. And we have a lot of entrepreneurs. Uh, a lot of people start great companies right here in Nebraska. Unfortunately, they move them to larger cities to compete for the workforce. So on an offensive uh, side of this, we're, we're looking to make certain that um, we uh, make investments around research and development. Uh, so we have greater innovation and automation and those core businesses. So around, around manufacturing, agriculture, banking and finance, we want to make the right types of investments so that we uh, create the jobs of the future around innovation and automation. Okay, now in, in terms of Nebraska's tax structure, um, uh, we had, uh, I had talked with some of your staff that, that told me that your uh, state has an inheritance tax that's kind of second to none. Um, in a way. So uh, what's what's that all about and and uh, uh, why do you think that needs to be changed? Well, I think as part of an overall tax uh, strategy reform, inheritance tax is is a part of that. So we're one of six states that has an inheritance tax. And among those that has an inheritance tax, we have the highest rate. The problem there is that it's a disincentive for our retirees to remain here in Nebraska. So it is an issue and it's not a tax only on the wealthy as some portray it as, it is a tax uh, across the board on incomes. Um, now, our local governments, our, our counties have become quite dependent upon uh, uh, that type of tax as a slush fund, if you would. And uh, we're gonna have to address that and our plan provides for uh, revenues to be able to backfill uh, the gaps in uh, local funding that is currently received from inheritance tax revenues. Jim, what do you think of the um, possibility that uh, Tom and I have discussed earlier of knocking off the inheritance tax in every one of the 50 states and allowing the federal government to have, um, you know, the policy choices and the revenue uh, from a sort of a, a revamped estate tax? Well, I think I would agree with everything other than letting the federal government uh, take that over, right? Uh, I would prefer to see it uh, eliminated at the state level. And uh, now granted, uh, I know that the federal government may take advantage of that, but uh, I'm, not a, I'm not a fan of the inheritance tax. I, I just don't think that it uh, achieves what it's intended to do. And uh, it just doesn't create certainty uh, in revenue sources for local governments. Or for the okay, let me try to, matter. yeah, let me try to kind of uh, uh, focus the discussion along along this line. You, you had mentioned that the 
uh, Blueprint Nebraska was a measure to uh, restore some level of competitiveness among, you know, between Nebraska and, and inter member states. What, why do you feel that there is a need uh, for competitiveness if you uh, uh, are already saying, well, look, you know, our quality of life is second to none? Well, why, why do you have to compete? Well, because uh, that quality of life actually is, is present in many of our pure states as well. Uh, in the Midwest, uh, people choose to be in the Midwest for reasons that quality of life, uh, the pace of life and things of that nature. So we're competing uh, with our peer states on things beyond just that quality of life. So when you're looking at Kansas, South Dakota, North Dakota, Wisconsin, and so on, a lot of those states can, can say they, they have similar quality of life uh, opportunities for their citizens. Uh, we are losing, we have a, an outward migration, particularly for the 18 to 34 year old uh, age group, which is the lifeblood of any economy. And we have to uh, take, make certain that we create uh, opportunities to retain. And I hate to say the, use the word retain, it sounds like we're, we're you know, shackling them to their desk, but we want to make Nebraska more attractive to where they do not leave and for those that are outside looking for a place to begin their career, that we want to make certain Nebraska is, is considered as a at, at the top of their list. So the essence of this is you would knock down the income tax. You would knock down the corporate income tax, I guess, also. <clears throat> and you would do a consumption tax. No, that is not our proposal. There is a consumption tax. Well, there is, well, yes, yes, part of it. There is a purely consumption tax proposal that is, uh, out there right now in Nebraska, uh, that's so it's called the epic consumption tax. And I want to make certain we're not talking about that. So you're you're partly right that in Blueprint Nebraska's tax modernization plan, we have a very narrow sales tax base in Nebraska. We exempt a considerable amount of goods uh, in our economy, and we exclude services from taxation in our economy. So we have one of the most narrow tax bases among our competitor states. We can afford to expand that sales tax base, avoid taxing business input, avoid taxing goods like foods uh, and medical services that you know we don't want to do harm to those at the low end of the e income spectrum. That, that includes medicines, right? Pharmacy. We, okay. We can avoid those items. We can avoid taxation of business inputs and we can generate revenues that will allow us to buy down the income tax, the individual income tax to where no one under $50,000 individually pays an, in, uh, an individual income tax. And then over uh, $50,000, 50, $50, uh, there's a flat tax, a low flat tax that's under 5%. And for corporations, we mirror that on the corporate side of things as well. So expanding the sales tax base in a way that is not harmful uh, to uh, individuals at the low income side, we can buy down income taxes. And what we do is we generate growth in the economy. Our modeling shows that we can generate uh, growth in our economy and local option sales taxes will increase where we can buy down property taxes to the tune of almost 20 to 25%. Uh, and we're going to do that through state aid to education. So that is what our plan is in a nutshell. Yeah, and well, you also have true. a plank where, whereby you're going to uh, knock off the local option uh, inheritance tax as well, right? I mean, the the That's right. the um, the framework as I read it was, uh, you know, right now you have these tremendous holes in your sales tax. Uh, you you would basically fill fill those up. You know, maybe you tax more services. Maybe you tax. Uh, more tangible personal property, um, but in return, you, you knock off the inheritance tax because it kicks in at such a low level, uh, and, uh, and and you buy down the income tax a bit. So, what are the tax rates uh, that you contemplate uh, in personal income tax and corporate income tax? So, for an individual, it'd be zero percent up to fifty thousand dollars for an individual. And uh, over that, uh, we would buy that down to 4.99%, uh, but that would have to be phased, it had to be uh, gradually phased down to 4.99 over about six years. Uh, the, on the corporate side of it, um, it would be 4% uh, 
for $100,000 and then over $100,000, it would uh, match uh, the uh, individual. That's pretty attractive. Um, what, what about the uh, consumption tax? What is the rate of that? So you mean the other plan? No, no your sales tax. Sales tax. Oh, our sales tax. So our sales tax is uh, uh, five, five and a half percent at the state level. And uh, local uh, government entities, local count, uh, local cities uh, have can can put up to two percent on top of that. So some counties, some counties, there's nothing, no taxes, and some are up to two percent. Let me let yeah. me uh, just straighten myself out on one thing: the the counties um, recover some of that, as you just mentioned, uh, and the counties take the real property tax. Am I right? And the counties also are responsible in Nebraska for schools. Am I right? Uh, for the most part, you're right. Uh, so the, the uh, only uh, cities and towns, uh, municipalities can have a local option sales tax, but is collected through the counties, as is the property taxes. And uh, the property taxes, 60% of the property taxes go to uh, education spending. Okay, so, so you uh, have, do you have a, a problem with earmark taxes just like we do then? Uh, the, the legislature can't spend uh, what it gets on, what it, what it deems to be important because there are shackles built into the, uh, the, the spending system that already that predirects some of the uh, some of the revenue toward you know certain specified causes yeah <laughs> Jim uh, we have a provision in our constitution that requires a balanced budget on the state level uh, do you yes we do hmm, good and, and so in terms of fiscal condition Nebraska is in, in is in very good fiscal condition and uh, the rainy day fund uh, is uh, is strong, uh, so we're in a good position to be able to restructure our revenue system, which is our tax code, uh, to make certain that we have a tax code that promotes economic growth and competitiveness. Uh, so, so again, I go back to this plan that that we are working on is about growing our economy and having a fair tax code more than it is about tax relief. We're going to come up. We're going to bring about tax relief. Or we're going to do it through economic growth and prosperity. Well, you know the uh, the modeling that you talked about would seem to be very you know uh, accurate, relatively speaking, um, on modeling the revenues based on the existing economic activity in the state. It, you know, and, and my guess is it would be lower than the revenues that you have now because, in large parts, the tax rates are being reduced. But um, the modeling you talked about, as would support the Nebraska blueprint, um, would, would, would assume the growth of the economy. How can you model on that? How can you know what growth you'll have so as to be able to say that this blueprint will, in fact, pay the bills? Well, first of all, we know that even setting aside, just setting aside entirely the economic growth. We know that the restructuring that we are proposing pays for itself. We know that uh, the income that we will recover from ex uh, expanding the sales tax base, we know pretty closely what type of revenue that's going to generate. We know pretty closely how much it's going to take to buy down certain tax brackets. So that part of it we're pretty good on. The modeling, the econometric modeling that we're doing that predicts the growth in the economy, that's based on certain elasticities around certain goods and services, also the propensity to spend by certain income brackets. We have good historical evidence that people do respond to taxation and, uh, and their spending habits and their investment habits uh, also, their migration habits. Uh, we can fairly much uh, predict what that's going to be. And so that's how we come up with that expanded portion mm -hmm. of this. So what I would like to say is that this pays for itself. 
nothing, if nothing else, we can create a fair, a more fair tax structure. But the gravy, the better part of this is that we're going to have growth in the economy. All evidence shows we're going to have growth in the economy. And I would suggest we're probably being conservative on our, on our measurements of that. Well, you know, this is a kind of remarkable because if you look around the country, you see that most, if not all other state tax systems are, what do you want to call it, um, their legacy. They've been in existence for hundreds of years, well, a hundred years anyway. Um, and they, and in terms of the general framework, the structure, uh, maybe the rates change, but the general structure has been the same as it has been. So you're really breaking away uh, from from the um, you know traditional systems here, and Nebraska could be, am I right? Could be a leader uh, in in tax reform because it isn't happening anywhere else. Am I right? Well, there are some states that are you know doing pretty well, uh, but they have not have have had an they have not had an overall reform or transformation. Uh, it's been uh, small changes over time. You know, you look at Florida, you look at Utah, some of those states. Nebraska has an opportunity to, yes, be a leader in transformation, uh, changing our tax structure uh, to promote growth. And, and uh, I think you're absolutely right. So how well, are you able to sell Tom, this Tom, to your... You, well, can yes, of course, we should ask that. But uh, well, why don't you ask that? And I have a question for you to ask afterward. Sure. So how are you able to sell this to... Uh, to your legislature, what what did you what did you tell them? I mean, what what were the kind of the main things that the legislators you know resonated with? Well, first of all, uh, we're talking in terms of a framework. Uh, we are not uh, bringing a specific piece of legislation to our legislators. Um, you know, the Platt Institute, uh, myself. We have good relationships with the majority of the legislature and members of the revenue committee, uh, with the governor. Um, so what we are saying is that this is a proposal for a framework. This, this modeling effort demonstrates that we can produce economic growth and prosperity, and we can make our state more attractive to the retention of 18 to 34 year olds. We're talking about this being more than just a tax relief package, that this is an economic growth package. And I think that's what resonates with them. And we are being very courteous and very, you know, in that we're, we're not overstepping ourselves here. We're not bringing legislation. Legislation comes from the legislators and from the governor. Uh, we're just offering our services and our modeling efforts to show them that this can work. And how popular is this with the, um, the public? Well, you know, uh, I like to I like to uh, measure our level of success by the number of shots that are taking at us, and I would say, you know, uh, we're in good shape right now. I think people are hearing us out. We're traveling the state. In fact, the the people that have the consumption tax, the epic consumption tax, we've invited them to come along with us so that the public can compare and contrast two plans, um, and the public is hearing us out. And uh, we're getting great coverage in the, in uh, local news across the state as we're traveling, and people are taking a wait and see because you know Nebraskans they've heard this all before, they've heard it before that someone's going to come in they're going to fix the tax system, and it doesn't happen, uh, but no one has really approached it from this way uh, before, and and um, so you know I, I think people are giving us a shot, giving us a chance. You think there'll be a bill or a series of bills to advance this? Uh initiative what next year 2022 yeah i mean those are some of the uh unusual aspects of the nebraska legislature next year 2022 is a short session uh it's a so it's not the budget uh year uh there's a there's a typically a two-year session first year is a budget second year is a shorter session shorter session heavy lifts typically don't take place uh i hope we can break that uh uh, uh, cycle and that we have a heavy lift in 2022, uh, but we also have redistricting uh, that's taking place and that's uh, kind of putting everyone on edge. So all of those things factoring together for the political environment, um, it's, uh, I would say the path is narrow 
but uh, there is a path. So we know now that um, you know a lot of states, uh, including Nebraska, have what do you want to call it? A divisiveness between the red and the blue, the, the Democrats and Republicans. Um, wh where are you getting support? Uh, is it from both sides? Is, is it from the red side? Is it from the blue side? Well, we, we have a different uh, divide. We have the red and blue, but because the legislature is nonpartisan, uh, obviously, everyone knows what the score is there. Everyone is a registered Republican or Democrat or independent, um, but it's a nonpartisan uh, unicameral system. Uh, but another divide is between urban and rural. And rural is, is really the reddish, the, the most red part of the state. Uh, and they are really leaning heavily on property tax relief. They're not so much focused on economic growth. Now they say they need workforce, but they're really focused on property tax relief. And then it's the urban side of the uh, pro-business group that is really driving an economic growth plan. Mm. So, so that's kind of an interesting dynamic that we have. Mm. And so, you know, we pick up pro-growth. Now, this plan picks up pro-growth Democrats, and it picks up uh, pro-growth Republicans. Uh, we have uh, some convincing to do with the uh, uh, rural Republicans, and we have some convincing to do with the uh, Democrat progressives. Yeah, that makes a good plan. Go, you're you're reaching out to both sides. You're appealing to both sides. That's right. Uh, Tim, uh, Tom, I I wanted to uh, suggest that we discuss at this point how how Jim's framework could be useful in Hawaii, uh, whether it could do the things that he's trying to do in Nebraska, whether it could do those things here. Uh, can you address that with him? Sure. I mean, I, I I'm uh, of the opinion that. Uh, uh, before something uh, like that can work here in Hawaii, uh, we really have to kind of work with the, you know, the uh, the lawmakers' mindset. A lot of people uh, in the, you know, in our our favorite square building uh, seem to think uh, that because Hawaii is a paradise, as 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 Jim suggested, um, that there isn't that 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 you that you can squeeze. Uh, taxpayers without mercy, and they won't leave. Uh, but uh, but the census figures and uh, our own uh, Department of Business, Economic Development, and Tourism uh, shows uh, that that's not the case. That people are leaving. Uh, that we are we are losing the competitiveness war, and we need to do something about it. Uh, once I think uh, the legislature is attuned to the need for us to be competitive. Uh, then, then I think um, the the value of something like uh, what Jim has in Nebraska can be readily apparent. Well, Jim has mentioned a couple of things that sound pretty appealing. I mean, uh, increasing the floor for personal income tax wouldn't that be great for young technology people? It would bring them into the state. It would hold them here. They'd get a tax holiday of sorts, wouldn't they? Wouldn't that be an attractive point? Uh, buying down the, the, the tax rate, of course, is going to be an attractive point. Right now, we have, I think, the second highest uh, tax rate in the nation. We go all the way up to 11 percent. Uh, the, you know, the 9, 10, and 11 percent brackets don't, don't kick in until you're well into six figures. Uh, but the low brackets, uh, you know, kick in at very, at very, very small numbers, uh, such that when, uh, when you're at the federal poverty level, okay, you're already in the fourth bracket. I mean, how, how sane is that? What about uh, the other elements? Uh, what about um, reducing corporate the corporate tax? What about reducing the real property tax? Uh, would those help in Hawaii? Well, uh, let's start with uh, corporate tax. Uh, we have a middle of the pack corporate tax rate. It's 4.4, 5.4, and 6.4%. And uh, but but the but the but the problem is we don't have a lot of corporations that pay that that kind of tax here. It it is you know very very minor compared with the individual income tax. The the two biggest drivers of our tax uh, tax revenue picture are the general excise tax, which is our sales tax equivalent, 
and the individual income tax, not only because that's that's where you get money off the workers, but it's because uh, maybe 75% of the businesses are what we call pass-through businesses. So uh, they don't pay tax at the corporate rate because they're not corporations. Uh, instead, the individual partners or the individual share, you know, shareholders in an S corporation or the individual beneficiaries of a trust, they would be the ones paying the tax at the individual rate. Mm, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, what what you teach us, Jim, is a lot of things. I mean, one is that you can have dramatic reform, and we should, because our tax system is old, and it isn't in touch in many places, including in Hawaii. Um, the second thing is you can use, this is like not revelationary, we learned this in school a long time ago, is you can adjust public conduct by changing the tax system as an incentive and disincentive. Um, and in that way, you can uh, expand the economy, uh, and uh, we could do that here too, couldn't we, Tom? Um, but I, go back to your first statement: is that uh, if you both you you both said this, um, you've got to convince the legislature of a mindset uh, that will address the incentive and disincentive aspect of taxation, and uh, take take a policy point on. Uh, you know, increasing diversification, increasing the economy. So uh, I think we're behind uh, Nebraska. Do you agree, Tom? Well, in terms of diversifying uh, the economy, where we're, I think we're de definitely behind almost everybody else. Uh, we have tourism, and that's basically it. Yeah. So, the, you know, the, uh, the answer, Jim, is whether you can expand the blueprint to include Hawaii, come out here, spend a little time. Um, and for that matter, Tom, whether you can, um, you know, create a, a tax foundation of Nebraska and go to Nebraska and check out the, <laughs> check out the quality of life. Yeah. <laughs> come, come in January when it's 20 degrees below zero. <laughs> oh, yeah, so, lovely. Jim, Jim, what is your advice to Hawaii? Well, uh, I'm going to go back and I, and I tried to kick it off this way. And, and I think it's really important that you frame uh, any type of a tax reform effort around the ambitions to uh, have economic growth and prosperity competitiveness. Start there. And, uh, and I go back to the Blueprint Nebraska plan. Uh, it's out on our website, but you know, tax modernization is really important, but we're very honest in saying it's one of 15 points that we have to work on as a state in order to retain that 18 to 34 year old population and to be a better place to live. And uh, so we don't shy away from the other 14 points and we put it all in perspective. And I think that's part of the reason that people are giving us a shot at this. They're listening to us because it's not all about tax relief. It's about expanding our economy. And there's other things in addition to taxes uh, that complement expanding the econ uh, economy. Yeah, and uh, uh, Tom, what's what's your advice to Jim uh, based on this discussion? And by the way, I hope you make it clear that we do not appreciate him recruiting our young people for Nebraska. <laughs> <laughs> we have the, we have the same issue, um, and uh, you know your your uh, catchphrase "growing the good life" I think is uh, uh, you know very good, uh, you know very catchy. Uh, you know, slogan that that encompasses a lot of the good things uh, that you're trying to do. Uh, I, I think um, you know our our advice to Nebraska is keep it up. Uh, I think I think you're going in a great direction, and you know we have to do the same here in Hawaii, uh, especially with regard to economic diversification and the need uh, to be competitive in the uh, national marketplace. And uh, you know we certainly hope we can follow your lead. Yeah, and we're rooting for you, Jim, because we'd like to uh, see how well you do on these things, how, how you tune it up, um, and maybe copy some of the things you've done or you will do. What, so what is the website that we can look at? Where, where can we learn more about your initiative? Sure, there's two websites. Of course, the Platt Institute's website is platinstitute.org. PlattInstitute.org, and the Platt Institute uh, uh, publishes many studies that align with the Blueprint Nebraska study. That's why we uh, we invited them to become one of the alliance partners with Blueprint Nebraska. Blueprint Nebraska's website is blueprint spelled out dash 
Nebraska spelled out dot org blueprint dash Nebraska dot org. And uh, on that website, you can uh, find the reports uh, in downloadable form. Well, that's great. Um, those are certainly resources I'll be looking at, and I hope you know some of our legislatures will do the same. Yeah, great to talk to you, Jim. Thank you very much for coming on. It's such a breath of fresh air to, to talk to somebody who's engaged in, in real tax reform. And I think it bespeaks well of Nebraska, but also it's it makes you a little optimistic or a little more optimistic about the country in general that you can come up with these things and have a reasonable chance of success. It's great. My and, pleasure. Uh, my pleasure. Uh, Tom, Tom pleasure. thank you for arranging, uh, Jim. It's great to have you both on the on the uh, on the show today. Great to uh, be here, Jay. Jim, the the, the one thing I, I just want to mention is that uh, Nebraska gets cold, doesn't it? Twenty degrees below, he said. Yeah. It's very okay. warm and gets very cold. Okay, well, <laughs> it's the diversity. <laughs> That's right. That kind of diversity, I, I, I don't care for. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jim. Thank you, Tom. Aloha.